Hello, friends. I'm Donna Clement Petrushka, and I am honored to invite you to something truly extraordinary, the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Now you can gain unprecedented access to my father's entire digitized video archive, every prophetic moment, every powerful teaching, Every anointed worship session is now available to you in the Prophecy Vault. We've also enhanced the Prophecy Database, meticulously updating it with new video content and profound insights. Plus, I'm excited to share that my dad's special School of the Prophets teachings are included, offering you deep, transformative lessons on hearing God's voice and understanding His revelations. As part of your membership, you'll also gain access to my prophecy blog, where I break down and analyze my father's prophecies, connecting them to current events. This blog will provide you with exclusive insights and a deeper understanding of how God's Word is unfolding right now. And we're offering something truly special, exclusive analysis sessions available only to members of the Prophecy Vault. These sessions will go beyond the surface, providing in-depth exploration of specific prophecies and their implications for today and the future. Your partnership is crucial. Not only will you gain access to these incredible resources, but you'll also help us continue the vital work of preserving, digitizing, and adding new Kim Clement material to the archives. So, I'm inviting you to step into the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Let's embark on this journey of revelation together, and I can't wait to see you inside. something on their face, do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to House of Destiny. This is your boy, Dr. Charlie C.J. Jordan, a.k.a. Charles of the Ritz. Welcome to Perspectives of the Prophetic. Guys, we still have this lingering question that a lot of believers are asking. When will the rapture occur? People are still sitting around, waiting, sitting around waiting for the rapture to occur. Okay, so this message is something that the Lord placed up on my heart to deliver because guys, one of the things I learned from Prophet Kim Clement, he used to say all the time, when it came to eschatology, he stayed away from it. And one of the reasons why he stayed away from it was this, so many people were sitting around waiting for the rapture to occur and not doing what the great commission was that Jesus told us to do, which was what? Preach the gospel, spread it throughout the earth. And so many in the body of Christ, especially in this nation, we're just sitting around. We go to church every Sunday. We go to church on Wednesdays. And, 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 uh, we just sit around and we're not advancing the kingdom. You know, if people don't come to church, a lot of people feel like, well, if you don't go to church, you're never going to be saved. That's talking about going into a church building. But now the church is us people. We are the church and the church is supposed to go to the lost. We are sent to those that are lost, that are blind, that are sick. And that's the reason why God placed this message upon my heart. So here's the question. When will the rapture occur? Is it pre? Is it mid? Or is it post-tribulation? But this is what I wrote down in my notes, everyone. We mustn't be concerned about when it happens. Why? Because we know that it's going to happen. Scripture tells us this. It's going to happen. What we must be most concerned about is that we have to prepare those that don't know him for his return. And that's going out preaching the good news. Because Jesus said it. He said, before I return, it will be as in the days of Noah. What was the days of Noah like? What were the days of Noah like? Let's go to Genesis 6, 3, and 4. And let's read what the days of Noah were like. Okay. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. 
yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of man came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Okay, so the days of Noah was this, that nothing was upon man's minds or hearts but evil. That's all that they could do. That's all that they thought about. That's all that they wanted to do. They were fleshly and it was just evil upon their minds all the time. And then God says there were the giants that was upon the earth because of the sons of God. Some said that they are fallen angels, but because of these sons of God, whoever they were, they came into the daughters of man and they brought forth these giants, this, this generation of beings that totally turned against God. And I believe that they weren't of the spirit of God. But anyway, that's a whole nother subject. And so God says, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. I looked up that word strive. You know what it means? It means to vindicate, govern, contend with man forever. So God had determined that at a certain stage, he will no longer vindicate or govern or contend with man any longer. A lot of people used to think, and, and, and I believe that it is true, but he says, yet his days shall be 120 years. So that's where we get the uh, fact that God said man will no longer live hundreds and hundreds of years anymore, that his days on the earth would be 120 years which is apparently true. That is true because we don't live as long as man did back then. But I looked up that word. I looked up this, okay? 120 revolves around being a divinely appointed time of waiting. So after God saw how sinful and dedicated to evil man had become after the Garden of Eden, he determined a 120 year period will be given for repentance and then the flood waters would come. So God was also saying in that statement, man will not live longer than 120 years old. He gave them an extended period period of grace for 120 years to repent. So this is very interesting because a lot of a lot of people think that what the sons of God did, they brought forth this 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 monstrosity of a generation, these giants that weren't of God, but then God extended a 120 year grace toward all that was on the planet at that time during Noah's day. So that's very interesting, guys. Think about the love of God. Now, we don't know who these sons of God was. We don't know. I don't know. If anyone knows, please email me. Email us and tell us your thoughts on this because the sons of God, that's a big mystery. But we do know that God had to get rid of that generation or he had to get rid of that tainted bloodline because the bloodline was tainted. So he had to get rid of it. But as we can see here, that when he said, yet his days shall be 120 years. And, and, and the word strive mean I will no longer vindicate, govern, or contend with man forever. So I will give them 120 years of an extended grace for my judgment has come, but I'm going to extend 120 years for my grace to come. Now, remember, Jesus says before he returns, his second return, it will be as in the days of Noah. It will be as in the days of Noah. So I don't want you to forget that. Okay. So how was it that Noah escaped this judgment that God had said? How is it? It's very plain. It's right there in scripture. Man, I never saw this until just now. The Bible said that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Not that the Lord found grace upon Noah only, but Noah perceived that he had found grace. How is that? How is that? Noah had found grace because of his prayer life. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let's go to Genesis 6. 8 through 12. This is so important because I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. 
Genesis 6, 8 through 12. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Notice what it says here. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Found favor, insight in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah, here's a key, another key, walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So the Lord looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So God had grace on Noah, but it was Noah who had insight. It was Noah who had something that even Noah found grace in God's sight. There's this communication. Remember when Enoch walked with God and he was not? Walking with God is so important. There's only a few people in the Bible that walked with God in the Old Testament. Moses, Noah, and now, and then Enoch. They walk with God. You know what walk with God means? If you look up the Hebrew for that, it means that God mingled with them. God mingled with them. Okay, and then I like this. I looked up the Hebrew meaning of found grace and favor. The Hebrew also means making supplication, praying, seeking God. Noah was a man that sought God. And Noah was a man in seeking God and finding favor in God. God. Like he said, love man, he extended 120 years toward those that were mixed up in all this evil. Abraham did what? When God, let me bring this home like this. When God visited Abraham, okay, and, 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 and he came in the form of three people, okay, and then after Abraham uh, uh, fed God, made a feast for God, and then God turned towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and he said to Abraham, he said, he said, now I must go to Sodom and Gomorrah and see that this that has come before me is indeed happening. And then what did Abram do, or Abraham do? Abraham began to intercede. Abraham began to say, well, wait a minute, God, because I know I've heard about what's going on there in Sodom and Gomorrah. If you find 45 righteous people there, would you save the city? or relent from, uh, 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 from destroying the city. And God says, if I found that, I would do that. And he, he, he took it all the way down, I believe it's to 10 people. Okay? I think it was up to 10. And, and so he got to a certain point, and God says, if I find this, I won't do it. All right? You know what Abraham was doing? He was interceding for those that were practicing such evil. And so out of his intercession, the 10 that was there, which was Lot family, God obeyed and, well, not God obeyed, but he answered Abraham's prayer. And those that Abraham interceded for, okay, they were saved. But here's the key. Lot and his family allowed that that Abraham had prayed for, allowed that into their home. When those angels came and knocked on Lot's door, Lot knew these, these gentlemen, they came for something different. And they welcomed God in. And that brought about salvation to Lot and his family. The same thing, could this be the same thing that Noah was doing for those that were in his day? He interceded. Guys, it took Noah, it took him a long time to build this ark. How many people know that many people probably saw him, called him crazy, called him stupid, and he said, hey man, something is about to go down. I'm telling you, man, you guys, you guys better get with me on this. And they didn't. And they didn't do it. So guess what happened? They succumbed to the judgment of God. Could it be that favor was placed upon Noah, not only because he sought after God and he prayed to God, but he interceded for those that didn't know God.
That's the point that I'm trying to make here. We go to church every Sunday. We have our little subculture. And I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about the religious establishment here in this country. We go to church. We go to church and we are so busy pointing the finger at those that are mixed up in the LGBTQ community. We constantly saying that they're going to hell. We constantly saying and focusing in on their sin instead of taking them the love of Christ and letting the Holy Spirit convict them and bring light upon their sin so that they won't want to do it anymore. They will see through the eyes of righteousness at all that they have been doing in the sins that they have been committed, and then they will have a choice to continue in it or to be f delivered from it. This is what we should be doing, everyone. This is what we should be doing. That's the reason why, as in the days of Noah, okay, God is saying, before he returned, this is how it would be. So, point two. All right, Noah builds this ark, right? So I'm talking about whether we are going to be captured away, raptured, pre, mid, or post. This is very interesting. Let's look at point two in this message, and I'm going to end with this. So God told Noah to build an ark since God found favor and, and, and since he knew that Noah was a righteous man. And so he said, I want you to build this ark. So Noah builds the ark does what the Lord instructed him to do, did everything that God told him to do. You see, when you seek God and you spend time with God, you'll be able to hear the instruction of God and you'll be able to do everything that God has called upon it and anointed you to do. That's why praying, seeking his face is so important in these days because that's what Noah did. So Noah builds the ark. Then this is what's interesting. I just said that Noah walked with God. So Noah did everything he was supposed to do. But then it was the Lord that shut the door. Read it in Genesis. Read it. I don't know. I, I, I don't have the scripture, but it's there. Noah did the building, but it was the Lord that shut the door. You know what that means in Hebrew? Closely joined. Sealed. Noah and his family. Walked with Noah and his family. So now they are in the cleft of the rock, so to speak. They are protected. Then what happens next? The rain begins. Noah and his family is in the ark. The rain brought about tribulation. Okay? Turbulence. Because you got to think about how it rained. The heavens open up, poured out, but then from the ground. The waters came from the ground. It was very turbulent. It, 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 it was something that the earth had never experienced at that time. And God promised that he won't do it again. That's the reason why we have the rainbow. So all of this was going on. Noah and his family was in the ark, but they were also in the turbulence, in the rain. And as it rained, and as all the shaking and everything that was going on, the the, the ark began to rise. What? On top of the storm. On the water. Within the tribulation. They are protected. But everyone that wasn't in that ark. They perished. They perished. So what's my point here? My point is. When it started. When the tribulation started. When the flood started. Noah. They were in the ark. They were covered, but they were rising up in the waters. So I'm not saying that. I just want you to hear this message. I know because this is something that really, really confuses a lot of people. But God placed this up on my heart. This is the reason why I'm saying this. And this is the reason why I'm releasing this message. OK, that we must be prepared. To go through whatever. Is going on as long as we know that God is with us because Moses and his family and all the animals that was in that ark, they went through that storm. They rose above it because God was with them. He was with them. 
So I want you guys to know this. It also says that when this unrighteous one comes to power, when the lawless man is revealed, he who restrains him will be removed. That's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. It says it like this, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. It's already at work. We know this, okay? Only he who now restrains would do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So we know that all this wickedness is going on now. The things that were happening in the days of Noah, with all of the twistedness and everything that's coming up, you know, the giants that were on the on the planet at that time, you know, these monstrosities with AI and everything that is happening right now. Man, it's so much like the days of Noah. But God made us a promise here. Before the lawless one comes to power and, re and is revealed, the Holy Spirit will be removed because as long as the Holy Spirit is here, because the one who restrains, that's the Holy Ghost, everyone. That's the reason why the devil tried everything in his power to keep the Holy Ghost from coming. That's the Holy Spirit. He restrains him. Where evil abounds, grace much more abounds because the Holy Spirit is here. And the devil can do only so much. And then the Holy Spirit says, okay, pal, enough, enough. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> Keeps him in check. That's why I love that rap that God gave us. When J-E-S-U-S is in effect, Jesus is by our side. We put that devil in check. He's with us. He's in us. And what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? He says that I will never leave or forsake you. So, when things really get ugly, when that ugly one appears, the Holy Spirit will have left. How many know that if his word says he will never leave us or forsake us, that we are going with him? So what am I saying, Charlie? What am I saying? Well, that's what you may be asking. I don't know when the tribulation will take place. I don't know if it will be pre mid a post. We shouldn't be concerned. What we should be concerned about is spreading the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of Christ, preparing others for his second coming, and knowing that when the lawless one, when it is his time to be revealed, the Holy Spirit will be removed. And God says that we he, that he will never forsake us. We have to have faith in his word. So guys, this message is simply this. Let's not sit around and wait for his return. But let's go into this harvest field. Let's seek his face like Noah did. Noah sought the face of God. He prayed. He was a praying man. He was a praying man. He interceded for those that were lost. He interceded for those that were caught up in all of that iniquity. He prayed for them. And this is what God is mandating us to do right now. We have to pray for all. We have to seek his face because God has a designated group of people. He has certain individuals that he has assigned you to go to. Assigned me to go to. Guys, it's beautiful. The plan of God is so beautiful. So we must seek his face. We must pray and we must take the good news of the kingdom that Jesus Christ is alive. Okay? So anyway, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I, I hope I brought it across. I don't know when the uh, uh, when the rapture will occur, but I don't care. That's not, I, I, I can't be concerned when it will occur. I know that it will. So in my knowing that Jesus is coming back and that he's going to, he's going to, whatever the uh, Greek word is, uh, haposo, I think is what it is. I might be mispronouncing it. Okay. But when he rapture his church, I know 
that we will go with him. But we have to make sure that those that God has called us to, there are many that are sick. There are many that are dying. There are many that needs to be delivered. And it is up to us to go and to bring this good word, this gospel of the kingdom to them, okay? I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed right now because this is a now word, everyone. This is a now word. Look what just look what God has done. God did something so miraculous and so beautiful for this country and the world by what just happened with these elections. Know that God is moving right now. And now is the time for us to step into everything that God has called, anointed, and appointed us to do. This is the time, everybody. This is it. So I want to give you an opportunity to sow. Information is scrolling along the bottom of the screen here on how to do that. Like the prophet said, five dollars in your face. If that's all you got, do that. If you don't have that, sow a button. And I'm going to add this. You've heard me say it before. I'm going to say it again. If you have a problem with showing money, you're already always asking for money, sow a word. Because a word of faith, a word from the heart of God, is like an unto a seed. And when you sow a word of affirmation, when you sow a word of love, God is going to give seed to those who sow. He's going to give you more because God is into multiplication. Okay. So this is the Ritz. I love you guys. I want you to know that you are truly somewhere in the future and you look so much better than all this garbage that's going on. And when J-E-S-U-S is in effect, Jesus is by our side. We put that devil in check. I see you guys next time on Perspectives of the Prophetic. Peace.